Part 2. Verdant Wind. Guardian Moon. The Alliance Leader's Ambitions. Claiming the monastery at Garrig Mach as its home base, the Alliance Army joins forces with the Knights of Seros. Together, they begin to take up arms against the Adrestian Empire. Each unit has grown over the past five years. You should check their classes and weapons. Have they? Good work, Hilda. You didn't do much manual labor, but you managed to rope the knights into helping us restore the monastery. Thanks, Claude. But all I did was piggyback on your scheme. I saw your eyes telling me to make some magic happen. Thank you so much for your help with the restoration. Oh, please, it was nothing. We're just doing our part as former students. I'm told you even routed the bandits. That job should have fallen to us. I'm sorry for the trouble. Hey, don't think twice about it. We're all allies in the resistance against the Empire, right? The Church is at war with the Empire, but let's be realistic. Wouldn't it be better for the Alliance to eventually submit? The way I see it, the Emperor wants to take over all of Fodlan and destroy the existing order of the world. I can't see her allowing the Alliance to continue to exist. We're in this just as deeply as you are. Actually, we were hoping to use this place as a base. The Empire begs to be meddled with, and we're first in line. What? Why would you want to make your base here of all places? Garrick Mach is situated in the center of Fodlan, both geographically and spiritually. We want to secure this location while the Empire is still overlooking it. I see. The Empire doesn't see this place as important at the moment because it's far from the front lines. But if we simply decide that it's ours to occupy, that does nothing to inspire the hearts and minds of the people of Fodlan. Luckily, good old Teach has finally returned to us. If the Professor Rhea entrusted with the Sword of the Creator fights at our side, well now, that's a just cause anyone could get behind. What's more, here we are, working alongside the legendary Knights of Saros. It smacks of divine providence, doesn't it? Can you feel it? I have heard what you have to say, Claude. And you, Professor? Where do you stand? Hmm. On our own, we lack sufficient military strength. But with the help of the Alliance... The Archbishop said if anything should happen to her, that we should entrust the affairs of the Church to you. If you intend to fight alongside the Alliance, then I will follow you as well. Is that acceptable, Claude? Of course. I can't think of anything more reassuring than having both Teach and the Knights on our side. Together, we'll stop the Emperor and her reckless ambitions. Wait. Where is Ingrid? Okay, this is kind of weird. She hasn't appeared at all, and then all of a sudden, ah, let's have a tea party. And she looks different. Thank you for inviting me. Damn, she looks really different. Thank you. Not as much as Leonie, though. In cereal. Quite delicious. This is still super creepy, though. It doesn't matter how many years have passed. Yes. Ah, oh, what would she even like? I had such a great time. Super weird. Oh, new music! Still got my room. So what is this? Protecting Garrick Mock? 
Dun dun dun. West wall. Dividing the world. I see. So yeah, this one is, this is level 19. Jeez. Should have done it earlier. Seems like the game hasn't really changed much. It's still basically the same thing, right? The supports have unlocked. So that's new. Huh? Really? This one hasn't unlocked. Oh my god! Everyone looks so different. Let's see what happened in the past couple years. Oh, it's just the, the promise. Holy. What about the people outside my house? Oh, I guess, yeah, them too. Escapes the territory alone. Oh. Former heir? Did he get disowned? Oh, I guess he did because he's part of the alliance now. Look at that. Oh. He looks so fancy now. Fancy pants. Former heir. Alliance. Returns to his territory, indulges in laziness, goes into seclusion. Returns to Embar and helps with the dispersal of the Opera House. Leaves the Empire. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Throws himself into battle against the dukedom. And then he comes back. <laughs> the Dancer. It's so good. I love it. Yeah, like these two actually fought against the uh, the Empire. Oh my god, this is Car. She looks so different. Adopted daughter of a merchant from Flumba. Annie, is that you? This is so crazy. These two aren't different at all, because they're dragons. This guy's getting really old. There's no prior history, it seems. Kind of sucks. Age secret? What? Huh. Oh, this guy's 50 now? They're almost the same age? You can't tell at all. He looks like he's in his 60s at least, and he's like his 40s. Serial's 20 now. Wyvern Rider. But I have a Wyvern Master, aha! This is so awesome. There's too many supports. Oh, this one. I really wanted to do this one. Too bad it only goes up to B. Too bad these supports don't exist. Huh. Leone? Huh. I put them together a lot, but they never reached A support, I guess. The threshold for it. Goals. Everyone's quite motivated. So this will be an explorer, I think. For the first day. Maybe. I don't know, I'll have to think about it. Silver Sword Plus. Sword Tournament? That should be an easy one. How's the marketplace? Let's check this out. Brave Sword 1. Okay, I gotta get that. So one brave item per type. Item shop differences. Master Seal? Oh yeah. Elixirs now. Oh, 99 HP. It's S-Drink. 
Silver Shield. Battle Lion. insane whoa I gotta raise their uh, what is it their cha and their authority oh this doesn't matter right now I can't really do anything anyway yeah professor levels too low still oh can she class change? She needs a master seal. She needs this kind of stuff. I guess she's not going to be a wyvern lord. Well, there's this already, so it doesn't really matter. At least for Pyleth. So Claude doesn't need a, a wyvern class anymore, because he has one. So this is actually going to be a downgrade if I do this. It's not? Really? I mean, I still wouldn't do it, because this is basically better. It says Wyvern Master, right? It's a little bit different, the classes. Huh. Level 14. Wow. Rip. Okay. I'll figure this out. I'll do supports first. Are the Byleth supports still for exploring only? Hmm, I see. I guess any time on the calendar or exploring. Okay, so I need to do other supports then. Oh, I can't scroll now to other houses. So let's do Claude and Marianne. I want to do this one really badly. Because I'm pretty sure Claude is going to bring up Elmira. Dun dun dun. Let's see this one though. I can't remember what happens before this. Oh, do you have an itch back there? I guess you can't scratch it on your own, can you? Is that still door type? Hi, <gasps> oh, Claude. It's just you. Sorry, I know you're in the middle of an important discussion with Dorte, but could I talk to you? About what? Dorte survived! Yay! I hope the the guard, the gatekeeper guy, survived too. It's about this thing you think you're burdened with. I've tried to guess what it is. Please don't. This is making me a little uncomfortable. There's no reason to feel uncomfortable. It's not like I plan on saying it aloud. But if my guess is correct, there's something I want to tell you. Will you hear me out? Fine, I will listen. Once upon a time, in a faraway place. What the... are you telling me a story? Just listen. Once upon a time, in a faraway place, there was a young boy. This boy came from a despised lineage. In short, his mother was a daughter of the enemy. So the young boy was treated horribly by everyone around him. He hadn't done anything wrong. Everyone hated him simply for existing. Yelling, fighting back, explaining himself. Nothing he did could change his situation. When he was finally old enough, he ran far away from home. He escaped. It sounds to me like he had no choice. I would have done the same had it been me. Thing is, after he ran away, he still found himself in the very same position. People in the outside world hated him for where he came from. Well, now that's... The boy thought he had no place to go. All he could do was destroy the boundary between the inside and the outside worlds. Destroy the boundaries? Right. If there was no outside and inside, just one side to share, then the people outside wouldn't have a reason to hate him anymore, right? It wouldn't be easy, but if he managed it, he could shrug off that burden. The point is, People are born with burdens to carry. That much is undeniable. But whether they bind us or we cast them aside, that's up to us. 
So I think you should try to cast yours aside, Marianne. Put that heavy burden down. It's time. But I... I don't know if I can do it. It's okay. I'm here for you. We're the same, and I can help you. The same? <laughs> Claude, we have nothing in common. Hey, did you see that, Dorte? Your friend just smiled at me. Thank you for sharing your story. I suppose I could try casting aside burden, as you say. We can try together. Let's do that. And when we're free, we can change the whole world. Nice. So that's what it was. Marianne seems to be more responsive now compared to before. Before she was like, oh no, I don't want to talk, oh I can't do this. But she actually like reacted to what he said. Character development. I'm curious about Hilda though. I feel like I'm drowning in responsibilities. Claude, take my mind off it all. Regale me with another of your weird childhood stories. Okay then. How about an old story from a foreign land that my dad told me when I was a kid? Are all of Claude's supports going to be like this from now on? I don't mind. Because I'm curious about Elmira. But you don't want to like pigeonhole a character into doing the same thing every time. Which is what they do anyway. Like always in Fire Emblem. Because it's easier to write like that. Still, I think it should be okay. I hope so. Once upon a time, there was a white camel that got separated. Oh no! <sighs> okay, I guess he will be doing this. It's story time with Claude. <laughs> I'm so happy for that white camel. I really thought he was gonna die. Was that story really worth bawling your eyes out over? <laughs> it was wonderful. Don't you know how moving that story is? You know, I never thought much of it until today. But seeing you bawling like that, I do appreciate it a little more now. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, you're always fake crying, aren't you? Getting all misty-eyed to make people think you're a delicate flower. What? You're awful! I only cry when I'm sad. Claim what you like, but I can spot real tears from fake tears any day of the week. Fess up. <laughs> if you understand me so well, maybe it's because you're no different. How's that? When you smile or laugh, it's not sincere. I can tell. I've only seen you genuinely smile a handful of times. Like when you're talking to the professor. Well, good one, Hilda. You hit me right in the gut. I guess you're right. I'm not so different from you in that way. But how did you come to realize that? Have you been watching me that closely? I'm afraid so. My eyes seem to wander toward you of their own accord. What? <laughs> Hold on! Forget I said that. I didn't say that. Nope, no can do. Forgetting isn't something this crafty brain of mine is capable of. Besides, my eyes have a tendency to wander in your direction too. How else do you think I found out about your fake crying? Huh? What are you getting at? Say, Hilda, once everything's settled down, do you want to come meet my parents? I mean, don't get the wrong idea, you just seem interested in my family. Besides, you've opened up to me quite a bit, but I still haven't let you in on my own secrets. If you meet my parents, I think you'll understand, though it might come as a bit of a surprise. Your family? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Well then, if neither of us changes our minds before the opportunity presents itself, let's agree to go visit my home together. Although, if it's a long journey, oh, you no. might not be too happy. True, that might be a tough nut to crack. As tough as Fodlan's locket. Some things never change. I like that support. Because both of them are like, Manipulative and all that stuff. Sociopaths. It's fun when two people like that are interacting. What is this? Lawrence with Ignaz. I'm curious how they developed. And I'm curious about Lysithia's supports. I'm busy. Ignaz 
nuts. Hello. What are you up to? <laughs> you frightened me. Oh, calm yourself. What is it that you're drawing? I thought I'd jot down some sketches of everyone while they're training. And then later on, I'll try to practice their moves on my own. Mm. But I can't really concentrate on sketching if someone's watching me. Just sketches, hmm? Even so, they're lovely. There's such life in them. It's as if they're moving on the page before my very eyes. Y you really think so? You know, I always hoped to be an artist. With skills like that, I'm quite certain you could easily make a living of it. And your demeanor is different when you draw. Bolder somehow. Ah, yes, there's an idea. Perhaps in the future you will join my retinue as my personal painter. Wait, have we not discussed this arrangement already? I had decided to take you into my service as a knight, had I not? Becoming a knight was my father's idea. Being an artist is out of the question, I'm afraid. So you've said. Well then, I suppose you shall simply have to become a knight who also paints. A knight who also paints? What a crazy concept. It's like if you do one thing, you can't do anything else. Huh. Never thought of that. I have seen your talent and can attest to it. Your gifts are too great to wither away in obscurity. A knight with the rare gift of artistic talent would be most welcome in my employ. <laughs> I had never thought of that. Still, I don't understand why you'd want me as one of your knights. As a fighter, I'm unremarkable. There is more to knighthood than combat. Courtly manners, a dignified bearing, and an aesthetic sensibility are also essential. A knight with an eye for art and the talent to create it is sure to improve the image of the nobility. <laughs> Lawrence, I'd never have guessed you were prone to such eccentric ideas. Thank you. I'm feeling a little more confident after hearing your kind words. Oh, no cause for thanks. It is a noble's duty to provide guidance to those in need. <laughs> Was that a pre-time skip support? Or was it post-time skip? Cause what I noticed about Ignatz, the way he talks post-time skip is a little bit different than before. I could be wrong though, because I haven't heard too much of him yet. But like what would you what would happen if you had a pre-time skip support post-time skip? Is that even possible? Cause for a lot of them they just paused, right? Because some of their personalities are actually a little bit different, or at least their interactions and uh, how they carry themselves is a little bit different. Oh, this support. I've been waiting for this one. This one's really interesting. I'll save that for last, I think. Let's do this. Uh, oops, let's do this one first. This one's a post time skip one for sure. Hey, Raphael. Reading a letter? See? He sounds a little bit different, right? It's like a... attempting to make it a little bit deeper. Well, if it isn't old Ignatz, I got a message here from my sis. Oh, a letter from Maya. I haven't seen her in so long. I bet she's all grown up. Nah, she's still a shrimp. It's been a while since I saw her. But she's probably only up to your shoulders. Wow. I can't believe she's gotten that tall. I wrote to tell her about how we're friends again. Do you remember this? Is that the picture I drew for her? She sent it along with the letter. I guess she held on to it since we were kids. All right, that's enough looking. She said to show it to you and send it right back. <laughs> to think she's handling my little doodle with such reverence. That warms my heart. I remember the day I gave Maya that drawing. She looked so happy. Before then, I never knew I could make people happy with art. It was a revelation. I've been drawing and painting ever since, in hopes of becoming an artist one day. You're much better now, so it must be paying off! I bet you could be a real artist. No, that's not possible, I'm afraid. I have to consider my parents' wishes. Who cares what your parents want? It's not like you're a noble or nothing. Your fate is your own! Huh. You think so? I know so. And I'm going to support you with whatever dream you got. Okay, let me see. What's the first step to follow your dreams? Oh, got it. You should paint me. Uh, 
paint you? Yeah! I want my little sis to know how good I'm doing here. So, I gotta send her proof. Plus, she'll be doubly impressed if it's a painting you made. <laughs> good point. I can certainly try to capture your likeness. I'll paint you with a warm, cheerful expression on your face. To bring my comfort. My face? No way! You gotta get my muscles in there! Mostly my chest and arms. Are you sure that's what she'd want to see? Wait! Before you start painting, I gotta get me a little more training in! If my muscles aren't bulging, then what's the point? I'm not sure about this. The orc. <laughs> Some people never change. This one is a violet one. Okay, so I have, I have two sub, three supports. This one's not ready yet. Take take some time. Interesting. Okay, Claude is Byleth and Cereal. So it's only the interesting ones left. Let's do Lawrence and Marianne first, and then Cereal. Ah, Marianne, I've been meaning to thank you. The books that you lent me have proved most fascinating. Would you permit me to offer you tea as a token of my gratitude? Um, I'm a little busy right now. Maybe later tonight? I said, yeah. Of course. I will look forward to it. Thank you for inviting me over. Certainly. Thank you for coming. Oh, and please relax. This is no formal occasion. Oh, this tea tastes so good. Doesn't it just? This is my absolute favorite. I'm pleased you like it. This pastry may suit your palate also. It is commonly paired with this tea in my homeland. Ah, it's sweet. It complements the astringency of the tea. You have exquisite taste, and there is plenty more where that came from. We simply must do this again. You want to spend more time with me? Naturally. Well, that's... Actually, there's something I need to say. Yes? What is it? I've been keeping this from you for a while. It's... it's about my crest. It's just terrible, I... Please, that's quite enough. Oh. Serious face. You're trembling. If uttering this secret hurts you, then I have no desire to hear it. It... it's just... Your smile is a greater gift to me than any truth. Whatever you have hitherto concealed, I am certain it is essential to you, and I do wish to know it. But not until the day arrives when you can tell me with a smile on your face. I am not the sort of man to prize my own knowledge over others' happiness, you know. Besides, the mystery is part of your charm. <laughs> she laughed! There! That's what I mean. Your beauty is always captivated, but that smile truly warms my heart. This is the first time I've smiled in so long, and I have your kindness to thank for that. <laughs> as I've said, you are perfect just as you are. But I suppose I can take a little credit. Yes, your radiant smile shall illuminate all the world. With me by your side, you will not be able to help it. Looking forward to that. I ship it. These two make a good couple. Alright, here we go. Too bad this only goes up to B. Sorry, Claude. You can't go past. Huh? Ah, Cyril. It's you. Is there a problem? It's not the first time I've been to the Holy Tomb. Rhea herself took me there once. Besides, the inside's been scoured by the Imperial Army. There's nothing left there now. Don't matter. Lady Rhea said nobody could go in, so I can't let you through. I gotta do what Lady Rhea says. You wanna break them rules? Then you'll be her enemy. If you're trying to do that, I'll have to fight you. Fine. I get it. I wouldn't hesitate to make an enemy of Rhea if it came to that. But I'd rather not fight with you. So I'll back off. For now. Why is that? Dunno. 
With your status, you could smack me to the ground and walk right over me. I guess, but I wouldn't. We're friends. I thought you were the kind of guy who'd smack down just about anybody if you needed to. You really are a stubborn one. All right, then, I'll tell you. I swore I'd change this world so that those without status are no longer oppressed. Though you were never one of the people I was hoping to save. I never knew that there were people in Almira in your kind of situation. I realized that my own perspective was too narrow. You helped me realize that. So, I owe you. Did you just say you're all about saving people who are oppressed? Really? I did. Is it so strange to hear that from me? It's just... You reminded me of Lady Rhea there for a second. Lady Rhea always tried to save us folks without any status in the world. Except she's evil. She's gonna stab you eventually. Claude's not gonna do that. Like when she let an outsider like me stay at the monastery. That was real nice. She brought in those kids from Remire Village when they lost their parents, and... Well, I'm not a religious man. I'm sure Rhea wouldn't want to be lumped in with a guy like me. Lady Rhea didn't do those things because the goddess told her she should. She did it because she wanted to. I can tell you that. I see. In that case, maybe I don't need to make an enemy of her. Thanks, Cyril. I think you've brought me a step closer to my dream. Thanks to you too, Claude. If I was able to help you, then that makes me happy. Oh, come on. It's going to end there? That's kind of boring. It should really go further. It's the Wyvern duo. Come on. All right. Oh, it's, it's different now, too. Oh. Interesting. It changes every time? That's pretty cool. Okay. So, I'm not doing this, am I? No, I gotta do Explorer. It's my only option. I gotta take a look around the monastery. Uh, I gotta bribe some people. Don't need to recruit them, I just need to raise their motivation. And then see what's up with everyone. I think this is gonna be a long explore. The last one was really short, and then it, it ended up being really long. This one I feel like is gonna be long, so it's probably gonna be like 10 hours. It's great. Mm -hmm.